Howdy everybody, my name is Zach Foster and I make modern quilts out of repurposed materials. And I'm about to box this quilt up and get it off to its new home. But before I do that, I realized I hadn't told y'all any stories about it. So let me do this quilt, quick quilt talk real fast and then I'll get it in a box and get a move on. This quilt is special for a couple of reasons. Um, it's the first natural dyed quilt I've made in my life. It's all 100% natural dyed fiber. So, uh, it's repurposed bed sheets, mortared it with soy milk, and then dyed in either indigo or that really cool pink that you see, which comes from avocado. Um, they both have a special background story behind them. So the indigo, I learned how to do a couple summers ago down in Kentucky with my good friend Robin of Hill and Hollow Farm. She grows her own indigo, and so she showed me how to do it from scratch. And in fact, so the, if you look at the light blue, those two or three little light blue squares up there in that corner, those came from that day in Kentucky. So that's a real special memory for me. The rest I did when I got back to Brooklyn. The, the medium blues and the darker blues are all Brooklyn indigos. Um, the pink is also very sweet because one, I don't know how you can take a creamy colored avocado pit and milk a pink dye out of it. Like it boggles my mind every time. But there it is. I'm so glad it works that way. You know, I don't eat a lot of avocados because of the politics behind them. I watched this documentary one time. But um, my colleagues at work, when I told them I was interested in starting to die with avocado pits, they started holding on to their avocados for me at lunch. So they would eat their the avocado and they would take a little brown paper towel and they'd wrap up the little pit when they were done with it instead of throwing it away and they'd squirrel them away in my mailbox in the office. So every day I get two or three avocado pits. If avocado pits were money, I'd be a rich man. I got some good friends, I'll tell you that. So that's what I think about when I look at the, the pink. I think all, all those lunches and all those donations. The, if you could get a little closer, the binding around the outside is a mint green. And that I chose specifically because I wanted it to be mm, kind of a secret, well, not so secret anymore, right? But a, a telltale signal of what was on the inside that's no longer seen. Because this quilt isn't batted with traditional cotton quilt batting. It's uh, an old scratchy wool blanket that my partner's father gave me to, to use in my projects. And uh, turns out nobody likes to sleep in scratchy wool blankets. So I thought this was a perfect use for it. And it was a bright mint green with this beautiful creamy floral pattern that will never see the light of day again. Well, at least as long as this quilt's around. So as a homage to that scratchy green wool blanket, I made the binding the same shade of green, just as a cue to, to hint to what's on the inside. What else I want to tell you about this quilt? We, you know, I think a lot about zero waste when it comes to sewing sustainably. And I guess I hadn't really thought about geometry and zero waste until I dyed my own fabric for the first time. And then I realized, oh, you really want to make, I really want to make the most out of each square inch possible. I'd put so much work into dyeing with the indigo and dyeing with the avocados that I didn't want to waste a single bit of it. So I said, what is the most efficient geometric shape out there? It's the square of the rectangle, right? You don't waste a single bit of it. Maybe you could say the same thing for triangle. Maybe, comes close. Definitely can't say the same thing for a circle, right? Circles are a very, very wasteful shape when it comes to cutting them out of fabric. Um, but it was something I hadn't considered before kind of rolling up my sleeves and getting involved with natural dyes. So I'm thankful for that lesson. Anyway, so when I look at this quilt, I assembled it in, in kind of four basic columns. And you can probably see them for yourself, but I'll point them out. Of course, column number one with the pinks. And then you have separate columns here in the middle separated by pink lines. And I try to establish and then transform and break the pattern a little bit each time. So if you look here, for example, you see there are diagonals of three. Each one, this is kind of a, a modified nine patch, um, each one kind of has its own pattern. I think it turned out pretty nice. I could keep it forever, but um, you know how many quotes I have? <laughs> so let me get this one boxed up and shipped out of here. Thank you for watching.